Hi, I'm James Spearman, owner of Spearman Aircraft. We're a 145 repair station and avionics shop out in East Tennessee. In this video, I wanted to present you with a lot of the questions that I get right off the bat when somebody calls me looking for an avionics install. So, hope you find this video. The first question I commonly get on the phone when somebody's looking for an avionics upgrade is what is the best option for my aircraft? To which I will ask you a counter question, which is what is your mission? If your mission is a fair weather pilot where you just fly on the weekends when it's not cloudy to go get a hundred dollar hamburger, I would not recommend a full maxed out package for you. What I would recommend is something much simpler that gives you a little bit of benefits um, replaces some of your steam gauges and gives you additional situational awareness and safety without the big price tag of an entire setup. An example of that would be dual GI-275s or dual G5s with maybe a GNC navigator. I would at least recommend, regardless of your category, an engine monitor. The engine monitor is going to save you the most life on your engine as you can troubleshoot issues much better when you have all four or six EGTs and CHTs rather than just one factory EGT. You would know if you've got a cold cylinder, a bad magneto, or a faulty spark plug. Every aircraft that I maintain that does not have an engine monitor likely is changing cylinders frequently. So I would at least recommend that engine monitor. The next level of pilot I would call them a medium pilot. They have their IFR certificate. They fly maybe one to 200 hours a year. Let's say they have a beach house in Charleston and they live on the East Coast or something similar on the West Coast and they wanna take weekend trips. They're only planning on flying IFR to get in or out of weather. They are not routinely planning on flying hard IFR. To that pilot, what I would recommend is maybe one 10 inch screen, such as a G3X or a TXI screen, rather than dual. I would still recommend the engine monitoring feature that you could incorporate into that TXI screen. I would recommend, likely, two navigators, GPS, COM, NAVs, such as the GTN 650s. Um, if you wanted a little bit larger of a display to use it as an MFD, you could do a GTN 750 and a 650. And I wouldn't forget about the autopilot because you're likely going to be flying uh, cross country two, three hour trips and the autopilot will save you a lot of brain bites and also energy taken off from you. The next level setup I would say is for your professional pilot. This is someone that has likely over a thousand total hours and they're either a CFI and they know and they're going to plan to fly IFR routinely. This level of pilot, I would recommend at least a dual setup. I would do dual G3Xs or dual TXIs, a 750 GTN, a 650 GTN. I would also recommend the pilot, autopilot. These will all guarantee you safety because it's giving you redundancy. If one or the other fails in flight, you still have the additional safety of the redundancy. You can also add in multiple magnetometers that are driving the screens. So that's what I would recommend for that pilot. And the last pilot I would say is just someone that wants the best thing on the market, uh, regardless of their mission, because they want to future proof and they want the most safety, right? Then I'm gonna give you a quote for the best of the best. Most people always ask me, should they get an autopilot? And to answer that question goes back to your mission again, but if you are flying cross country, say routinely one to three hours or four hours routinely, I would definitely recommend the autopilot. It saves so much energy from having to hand fly the aircraft the entire time. 
obviously you should be proficient enough to fly the aircraft by hand over three hours. There's what you should be able to do and what you want to do all the time are two separate things. So this will save you a lot of energy and give you back brain bites when there's a lot of traffic, a lot of weather, and a lot of other things going on that you would prefer to focus your attention on. Whether or not you should do a custom panel purely depends on your budget. It doesn't necessarily add any benefits to it. It's gonna be purely aesthetic. Unless there's some sort of modification where uniquely we have to cut the panel out. Most of the time we can use the existing panel and modify it to fit the new screens in and it'll look fine. The people that want a new panel, they want it to look the best. You can also do custom switches. You can put your checklist on the panel. They want the best looking panel. Oftentimes people forget a handful of things when they're looking to upgrade their aircraft. And while the aircraft is being torn apart, things that you should consider is an audio panel. A lot of people do not consider that. They're only thinking about the screens and the autopilot. Having crystal clear audio is something that you can get with an updated audio panel. And typically their lifespan is quite long. Another one is your transponder. The transponder often gets overlooked, but caught because you need ADS-B in to display in some capacity traffic and weather. So without a new transponder that has ADS-B in data, you're not gonna have the major benefits and safety of a new upgraded system. Commonly, I get asked on the back end, what is this 337, the SDC, and what paperwork needs to come back from an install? It does depend on what is going in it. Most of the upgrades at this level is an STC, Supplemental Type Certificate. So that means that it can modify the original type certificate. The original type certificate, the manufacturer had to prove to the FAA that these things are in this aircraft and it will not cause it to go kablooey, right? So it is what is installed in this aircraft and it's mandatory for those things to be there. The engine, the propeller, a lot of other major facts like that. So when we decide to make changes, you need a supplemental type certificate. That means Garmin went through the lengths and spent millions of dollars likely to prove to the FAA that yeah, you can take the old screen out or old instrument out and put this new screen in and it won't go kablooey. It is a safe product. Most of it has a STC. If it's something that's considered a minor alteration, that would be something determined by the IA installing it. He might decide that this is um, a minor alteration and there is definitions on what is a major and what is a minor. Some of the things like a small switch might be a minor alteration or a standard part. You don't need a 337 or an STC, so you might not need those. But if in a major upgrade, you should at least be receiving the STC paperwork. You need to register it with Garmin so that they will give you your warranty and put your end number on the STC paperwork. And then at 337, which is a major alteration form. You need that for legal representation and the IA that is signing that says, we installed this, we use this STC, which says it was approved and it's on the aircraft model list. And then we send that to the FAA and a copy stays with the shop and goes with the owner. So a lot of information, but expect to have a 337 and an STC paperwork. Another question I get commonly asked is, how long is the warranty? And this varies with manufacturers. I'm not a, a Garmin representative, although I'm a dealer. Um, I would look into the warranty that came with your product and things can change over time. But currently, uh, their normal warranty is two years for something that is TSO'd and approved for certified aircraft um, with an hour stipulation. If it's something that's just overhauled uh, or secondhand uh, from them, it would be, uh, it starts to drop off from there, typically one year or even less. That's what I would expect. Labor warranties, I would expect a labor warranty. Most shops range from 30 days to one year or a certain amount of hours. My specific one is one year. I would at least ask this question just because with such a large avionics job that could range anywhere from a few days to a few months, there will likely be things that need to be addressed afterward. And you don't wanna to have to fly all the way to California if you're on the East Coast or vice versa. 
You want to be able to go to a shop that says, yep, no problem, bring it in and address that issue. And within the first year, you should have all of those worked out. The final question that I get is, will it help the resale value of my aircraft? And to that, I would say, yes, definitely. How much? Depends. In my experience, what I see in the marketplace is that aircraft get lumped into whether they have old original avionics or they're well equipped, they have glass, and their price point is going to fall somewhere in that category. An aircraft, regardless of the manufacturer, they're going to be viewed as, yes, it has more or less capabilities, it's going to be lumped in with a higher price point. If you have all original, you would expect a lower price point. I don't see typically that you would get it dollar for dollar back out of the sale of the aircraft. I would not expect that. I think that's unrealistic, but that depends on the purchase point that you bought the aircraft at. If you got one heck of a deal on the aircraft and it was a home run, maybe you, in your budget you could afford and get back the entire installation cost. Again, I'm James Spearman, and in this video, I wanted to go through some of the FAQs that I get when people call about a Garmin Avionics install. I hope this answered some of those questions for you. Obviously, if you'd like more, go to my website, www.spearmanaircraft.com, fill out a form on the website, or give us a call, and we'll send you an email, get a little bit more information uh, from you, and that way we could build a quote if you're interested or just answer the questions that you have. Happy flying.